Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's bird video. We're going to have a look at the weather for 10 to 14 days for today's bird video. Day 10 will take us 28th of January. And uh, we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the Strategy Affairs and ECM Ensembles. Maybe once you're around a couple of weeks, we'll have a look at the ZFSV2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That gets us into uh, the middle of February now, I think. So I shall get on that for you in a moment. Just to save that first. The video release today was our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. And we've also released a European outlook as well. Please check out those two vids if you'd like to do that. Like, share, and subscribe on all of today's videos and content. And thank you so much, everybody for uh, doing that. We need to put on around seven, six or seven subscribers to get ourselves to 17.8K. Uh, Unbelievable. Thank you so much, everybody. We're almost at 18K. Um, but thank you so much. And please give us a sub to your friends and family to subscribe. And we thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Right, going to start off with the Arctic Oscillation Observed and Forecast chart today, I think. So the black line shows where we've been. With the Arctic Oscillation, the red lines and the MOGFS ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. Uh, we're currently very negative uh, with the AO. That's because we got, a, or we have had a big area of high pressure blocking around Greenland. And that has forced cold air from the Arctic down into both sides of the Atlantic, uh, North America and also North Europe, being it very cold, of course, recently. Remember, it's always weather that drives the index. So the reason that the AO is so negative there is because we have had a lot of blocking over pole. However, GFS ensembles are forecasting that the uh, Arctic Oscillation is going to go really very positive as we push on um, through the next week or so. So that tells us the blocking is going to collapse and that we're going to replace the um, high pressure over Greenland and whatnot with low pressure. So a big change coming and we see that very clearly within the AO observed and forecast uh, chart there. Now, we do see, though, that right at the very end, the AO beginning to uh, drop again, or is forecast to drop again. That's towards the beginning of February. Um, now, possibly by early February, we could be starting to see the first signs of blocking beginning to uh, reform, re-emerge over high latitudes once again. So that will be something to look out for as we head towards February. At the same time, the NEO observed the forecast looking like this. So, again, been pretty negative with the uh, NEO over the uh, past week or so down here. We're currently there, so still negative, but more towards neutral. And GFS Ensembles are forecasting that uh, the NEO is actually going to be going into a positive phase. And unlike the AO, there's no sign of a return towards negativity of the NEO into early February there. So, if we do get blocking returning at the beginning of February, um, we may not be a success of pulling, uh, pulling that into, um, you know, putting it into Northern Europe if the NEO remains in a positive setup. So we'll be keeping an eye on both of the indexes, both the AO and the NEO over the next uh, few days and weeks, of course, as we always do. Right, so latest temperature observations from XC weather looking like this was very, very, very cold last night, wasn't it? Wow, really bitter. Uh, I believe some places have had their coldest January night since 1987. Other places have had their coldest Jan January night since 2010. Certainly was uh, a bitterly cold night. Temperatures have gradually recovered, so now we're up to around 2 degrees at Oxford. For example, two degrees at Church North. I say we're covered. These are still uh, very cold temperatures. Wittering at uh, plus three. Uh, Sunset at uh, uh, plus two degrees. Farnborough at uh, plus two. Still sub zero birds to go further north. Was Teesside at plus one. Newcastle at uh, zero degrees. Um, Carlisle at zero degrees. Up into Scotland, just minus two. Uh, Aviemore minus one. Uh, Tang Range, I think that is, and minus one uh, out in Ahara down into Northern Ireland. We've got uh, Belfast at two degrees. In the far southwest, it is a little bit less cold there, so Aberpore is at four degrees, Northwick at three degrees, and come down towards Camborne um, down there, you know, in Cornwall, and it's six degrees there. So, uh, um, you know, closer to average in the far southwest. But another very cold day across most parts of the country. It will be another very cold and frosty night which is Northern Ireland, England and Wales tonight as well. Uh, obviously, this is having an effect on central in temperature. So the CT is now sitting at 3.6. That's 0.2 of a degree below average. That's visual to yesterday, to the 17th of uh, January. That's got another couple of days to fall, and then it will start to rise very quickly <laughs> as we go through the last stages of the weekend and on 
into uh, next week. So but I would imagine by this time next week, that will be solidly back in the fours once again. These are the 500 mm bar hydronic road charts from Penn State University for the next uh, week's 10 days. We've got the GFS on the top and the ECM is on the bottom. No, that's the wrong way round. What are you doing, Gav? I've only been doing this since 2012. So I've got the ECM WF on the top and the GFS is on the bottom. I think it's disappeared, though. That's my excuse. These charts disappeared for years and years. Um, in 20, from 2020, they just came back, you know, a few months ago, so I'm still a bit rusty with them. No, it's the ECM on the top, and the GFS is down here on the bottom. 500 millibars, 80,000 feet, there's an area in the actual high pressure and low pressure uh, being moved around by the jet stream running above. Um, blue extrapolates to low pressure. And uh, uh, yellow, orange, and red ex extrapolates to uh, above average heights, which is high pressure. So you see the East Sham building up a large ridge of high pressure across much of southern and also western and northern Europe, actually, in the seven, ten day time frame. And we've got this deep, deep below in the Atlantic. So I say the, the blue colours extrapolate to low pressure. That's going blue to purple. That's really deep low pressure in the Atlantic. That's the reason the uh, Arctic Constellation is going into strongly positive territory in the next week because of that to deep low pressure there towards Greenland and in the North Atlantic. Oh, uh, well, on either side of that deep low, we've got ridging. So it's ridging through uh, Northern East America, ridging through Northern and also West Europe. We've got to see where that high pressure goes. You notice there is some high pressure going all the way back into the Arctic. So this all this could all end up as like a big block up here somewhere. If it did that, then we could get wind going into the east. But it might, you know, it, it, it was quite an unusual evolution. So sometimes high pressure does go north from southern Europe. You know, sometimes it does go in that direction, form a big block up here. But it is very unusual for that to happen. Um, so let's just wait and see where, where we go with that. But certainly into an anticyclonic and up to, like, day 10, uh, mild signal for much of Western Europe. Uh, GFS is very similar, actually identical, really. You've got the big area of high pressure up the western side of Europe from southern Europe all the way up to northern regions. Deep low pressure is in the Atlantic. So both the ECM and the GFS building up high pressure. That is a pretty dry signal. And as I say, around day 7, 8, 9, 10, will be mild or even very mild. If the high pressure was to go further north and set up a block, then, then it would start turning colder. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles that come with its red line to 30 year upper air temperature average for Nottingham, starting off colder than average at the moment. But we will see those upper air temperatures starting to come up through the weekend. And we're into a relatively mild spell as we go through the uh, rest of January, really above average temperatures. Looking a bit zonal, so warmer and cooler sectors alternating. Um, with one another, but averaging it all out, it will be milder than average there. As we go towards the beginning of February, just see possibly signs of a little bit of a reduction in the temperature then, but uh, that, of course, is a long way off. Precipitation, well, it could be a lot of dry weather over the next couple of days as well, but uh, we are turning wet and windy through the weekend, so as the temperature recovers, so uh, back comes the wind and rain too. It doesn't look overly wet, I have to say, so I don't think going back to the deluge, we're just going back to uh, some wetter and windier conditions, and then possibly drying out a little bit through that period. Snow road, but not, you know, not much happening until like the beginning of February, then there are a few snow spikes, but of course that is a long way off in the unreliable time frame. Temperature anomaly is showing the 18th, 26th of January, above average, could be a mild and average week to come. And precipitation anomalies from the 18th, 26th of January, January Western Average in the North, and a driving average for more eastern and southern regions. Latest wind from that from EarthNoSchool.net showed that we continue to bring down those cold northerly winds today. However, changes are afoot in the Atlantic, so um, westerlies are waiting for us, and we'll start to return from tomorrow. And by the weekend, this deep low just here will be bringing that weather system across the country and uh, that is certainly going to be bringing lots of wet and windy weather with it so that takes us very nicely through to chart data this is how the latest uk bet euro run is looking for midnight on sunday oh yes we're pulling in the southwest wind so much milder but also wetter when you're very wet windy as we go from sunday into monday 
Pressure across England and Wales, severe game of force wins, possibly then. And further low pressure driving through during the middle part of next week for a high pressure perhaps, perhaps begins to build up from the south by first. So by first we start to turn a little bit dry. Will still be very mild though with winds coming up from the southwest. Icon again looking wet and windy through the weekend. Heavy rain and gales or severe gales to come. And these unsettled but mild conditions carry on with ICOM through to the middle of next week. Less of a build of pressure from the south by Thursday, 25th January. January. Notice these deep purple colours uh, in the North Atlantic and towards Greenland and Iceland. That's the polar vortex really strengthening up through the course of uh, next week. So when those start turning up, watch out. <laughs> it means that the TV is becoming uh, really strong. This is how uh, the KMA is looking. So again, all much of a muchness over the weekend to the beginning of next week. Unsaid with gales or severe gale force winds very likely. However, high pressure starts building up from the south as we get towards um, the very closing days of January. We find ourselves going under under a ridge of high pressure. So becoming dry, but still pretty mild up to that point. The GFS, midnight run again, looking really wet, windy, proper old battering going on through the weekend into uh, the early part of next week. Then higher pressure beginning to start building up from the south. We saw it on the um, Penn State University chart, didn't we? So high pressure starts taking over across much of Europe as we get through to the 28th of uh, January, day 10. Um, so we're on the mild side of that ridge. We're drawing up wind from the south, so that will be mild or very mild. However, over on the continent, probably quite cold under the high pressure with the risk of some frost and fog. <coughs> Excuse me, everybody. Now, we go beyond that. And again, we try and build some higher pressure in, but then uh, we get to the very end of a GFS midnight run. Quite interesting. Low pressure starts sinking southwards through the country, and that starts to raise the heights more towards the north. So that's one way we could get this high pressure eventually going north if low pressure and the jet stream begin to push southwards. So by the very end of the GFS midnight run, it gets us to 3rd of February, we are bringing something of an easterly wind, so looking quite quite cold by that point and under a trough of low pressure. This is how the uh, GFS 6Z is looking in comparison. Again, not much of a much is for next week, starting off wet and windy, then higher pressure trying to build from the south. Um, and as we get toward day 10, yes, we find a ridge of high pressure starting to build up from the south. Notice these heights are relatively high to the north and the northeast as well. So it wouldn't take all that much of this high pressure to go up to that area of high pressure or that high pressure to come down <laughs> to that high pressure, depending on which way you look at it. Um, so, yes, heights are rising, you know, to, to our south, to our east, and to our north, with um, all of this low pressure out in the Atlantic, producing what we call warm air eviction, um, and that's where it's like pumping air into a tyre, and it inflates a ridge on the eastern side of the WAA. Um, however, it, it doesn't actually come off as, as a big blocky air of high pressure. We finish up just sort of anti-cyclonic from south, but actually dry, still quite unsettled up in the north. But there is an attempt there to uh, get a Scandinavian high going. If you enjoyed the video, please you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much everyone for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell friends about guys, whether it's our to subscribe to it will help to get us to 18k we need to put on around six seven subscribers to get to 17.8k that's our next mini target seven seventeen thousand eight hundred subscribers so if you could give us a sub um it would be incredible we will thank you so much for doing that okay uh gm again looking wet and windy through the weekend into the beginning of next week that's a proper old battery going on there midnight on monday gales or severe gales through the country, and we keep that uh, mild and unsettled weather going throughout most of next week. However, by the very end of the GEM run, notice again trying to build up some high pressure towards Scandinavia, and actually by day 10, that looks like it's about set to bring in an easterly, I have to say. A couple more steps we've got to go through to get a proper EC out of that. We've got to send this high pressure uh, that's uh, sitting around here, we've got to send that into the Scandinavian high, so just build up Scandinavian high a little bit more to get the wind into the east, but it really isn't all that far from it at all, and there is some cold air sitting to our east as well, cold air just beginning to move over the North Sea into eastern parts of Scotland, so um, the GM is very close to uh, unleashing some cold easy winds there 
for the end of January. Uh, then the East Show looking like that again. By a wet, windy as we go through uh, the weekend into the early part of next week as well. Further load pressure rattling through. The second half of next week start to see some ridging beginning to build to our uh, east as we head up towards days 8, 9, 10. Uh, then we get higher pressure starting to set up over the east country, low pressure out to west. Whether this high pressure will go north up to Scandinavia or not, you know, so it's speculative. It's be interesting to see what would happen uh, a few days further on. But there is definitely a change here to higher pressure taking over through the last week of January and in a position that brings a lot of mild web with it initially. And then we see what happens after that. This is a precipitation forecast based on that. In Chevron from Tobetshow.com, still got those snow showers packing into Scotland. However, from the weekend onwards, it all starts turning back to rain. And some of the air tucked back in. Coffee Atlantic looking proper wet and windy there as we go through the end of the weekend into the early part of next week. Another spell of wet and windy weather around the middle part of next week. Um, and then we start turning drier, though, as we head towards day 10 and higher pressure begins to start taking over from the south. But uh, there's a lot of rain in there, actually. That's a surprising amount, really. You go through the slides and, you know, there's regular rain coming up from the weekend throughout most of next week. We uh, see some really wet, windy weather there on the 23rd of January, for example. And then further heavy rain for England and Wales, anyway, on the 25th of January from that low. More wet weather on the 26th of January, too. So it brings your rain to come with the ECM, but drier by days 9 and 10. This is the option of a table within the ECM on Summer's Day 4, day 10. Gets us 28th of January from the Icelandic Met Office, 51 out of 50 members of the ECM ensembles, all of them with high pressure ridging through the north and west Europe, low pressures out in the Atlantic. So mostly dry and mild with all of the options there as we come to the end of January, high pressure building up from the south. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. It gets us to the 2nd of February, 19 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure to the north, high pressure to the south, and that brings in uh, a westerly flow, so, um, you know, that's unsettled for the door, drier for south, mild. 18 with high pressure, still sitting more or less over top of country, mostly dry, but by with that. And then 14, getting the high pressure up to Scandinavia. So that's the route to get in the next cold spell. Get that high pressure north up to Scandinavia, start to bring in the wind from the east. Only 14 members of the ECM ensembles doing that at the moment. But we'll keep an eye on it. It's a possible evolution as we're going into February. This winter so far has been, um, you know, generally quite mild. But, of course, the cold snaps you have had, like in the last week, and at the beginning of the winter, uh, the start of December, were northerly based. But maybe February, rather than looking north, we've got to look east. We shall see. CFS V2, uh, finally, these are 500 millibar. Height and noise breaking down into weak periods. The first week period take us from the 18th to 24th of January. So the next week looks unsettled, low pressure in control, and bring wind in from off the Atlantic. So wet and windy weather returning. Week two will be the 25th of January to the 31st. High pressure starting to build up from the south then. Very mild, but turning drier, particularly for more southern parts of the country. Week three is going to be the 1st of the 7th of February. With low pressure in the North Atlantic, high pressure from the Azores into western parts of Europe. Winds again coming in from the west like that, so relatively mild first week of February. And then week four is the 8th to the 14th of February. High pressure taking over... Um, over and to the east of the country. Now, this is a Scandinavian high, but it's not all that far from becoming one. So, if our high pressure goes a little bit further north, we'll start bringing the wind from the east then. So, um, up to that point, you know, it's relatively dry and by a scenario, but it wouldn't take much to go uh, properly, properly into a Scandinavian high and bring the wind in um, from the the east. We shall see. Right, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please can you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Drop a comment. Let us know 
What do you think about this all about the video? Saying, don't forget to tell friends about Gals Web. It's very so to everybody for doing that. I'll just tell you what's happening tomorrow. So we're going to have a 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. Jamie Friday, 10 to 14 day. Um, probably going to do a live stream. Probably do a pub run live as well. So uh, lots and lots to look forward to tomorrow. Um, so keep checking back to the channel for more. But for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.